Bonjour, hi. Welcome to the Nadine's show where we talk about social issues of all race and gender. Please comment, share and like. Your feedback will be mostly appreciated. Come and join our team where we have great discussions. Welcome to the Nadine's show. Okay, we're live now. Okay. Uh everyone Chrissy how did you yes hi Chrissy yes. Hi. how are you I'm just waiting for you, sir. No, problem. no problem how are you doing I'm good how are you fine thank you awesome just waiting for Teresa hi everyone thank you for joining Teresa, are you been doing good? I'm great. I'm great. How are great. you? Just hanging in <laughs> the weather. <laughs> it's nice today. Yeah, it's nice. Just take it easy, as usual. I thought we have to go. Just waiting for Teresa. Hi, everyone. Please share the live. Please share. Alive. Hi. Hi. Hey, DJ. Yeah, we're waiting for Teresa, the other um, our co-host of the night. Yes. We're just waiting for her. You have your water. Please share the live, everyone. You got your water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna need it. Please share the live, everyone. Please share the live. And I'm so happy that you guys are joining us for tonight's show, the very special show. So I'm just waiting for Teresa, who's our co host for the night, and she'll be here soon. Let's see what happens. Miss Teresa, please share the live, everyone. Miss Teresa. Yeah, she's not on. Why she's not on? And I told her we're coming on now. How's the case? Okay? You're fine. You're fine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Well, you know, sometimes we're going to be coming by to say hi. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Um, how are you? I'm doing fine on the show. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And um, it's going to be a great show. I know it will be. It will be. I mean, yeah, it'll be a great time. show. Yeah. Okay, you. Okay, she says, Chrissy, you are a bit low. Your voice. Yeah, she can't hear it. Uh, yeah. Sashi said you're a bit low. All right. Can you hear me now? Am I clearer? Yes. Yes. 
I tell you, you know, I plan you. Oh, you're using Apple? Yeah, and they're so expensive, and it's the, the, the quality mom. is awful, man. Mom, mom. Yeah, my Apple girl. Mommy. Mommy. Appreciate the live, everyone. Appreciate the live. Where's Teresa? We're waiting for Teresa to start our show, which will be a great show. I'm very excited because I know for tonight for sure we'll be all right. learning some new you, information. Where's Teresa? How is the weather in New York? How is it so Today far? Today was pretty good. I'm not in New York. Today is pretty good. Everybody keep thinking that New York and Connecticut is the same place, but no. <laughs> Oh, no, you know what it's upstate. It's tri state, same way. It was pretty good today. I mean, sunny was, you know, cool. It's not summer, so it's still kind of cold. I know there's different. I know there's two different states, but I always think that you live in New York. I, that's why I always say New York. Yeah. yeah. Everybody said the same thing, but all right, that's I have some cool I'll take New York. It's fine. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty close. Some cousin in Connecticut. Yeah, we have to link up, so you have to send me them information. Yeah, I will. I, I will. I really don't go anywhere. I stay in the house. Okay. okay. You have a couple cousins in in Connecticut, and some living in New York too. Teresa, what do you send a request? Or else we're going to start a show with our there. She, she, is, is she on? I don't see. I don't see her. No, I don't see her. Miss, yeah, she's not on. Guys, please share the live. I, I just spoke with her. I just spoke with her, and she said, "Okay, get on now." But I don't know what's happening. Lisa, stand after. Oh my god. Do you want us to start? We can start, it's fine. I mean, okay. Teresa, we're gonna start because we don't know what's happening and um I spoke to you just now and told you that I'm, we're gonna start and you're not on and it's eleven after the hour, so we're gonna start. Hi right, everyone, welcome to the Nidhi show. And today we have our special guest, Miss Nelson. You might have called Miss Nelson. No, that's my name. Okay. She'll be our special guest today from Connecticut, USA. And um, her story that she's going to bring forth today is, um, it can be sad. So we do apologize if some of our guests maybe have family members who passed away because of the illness or they're going through right now. So we maybe some trigger warning. So we're, we apologize, My but Easter. thank you to join us and also to share our life. So this is, sorry, Ms. Ms. Nelson. It's fine. Christine is fine? Okay. So, so Christine, um, not only her, we were supposed to have tonight on our show, we're supposed to have one of her special friends that she became very close with who has the same medical condition as as mrs as christine unfortunately we have to announce that she passed away in toronto three days ago three yeah it was the 14th the 14th four days ago she passed away i was in the supermarket when i got the call that she passed away yeah so it's very sad and our condolences to the family and to the friends and um it's it christina is kind of a little bit down now so please forgive her if she maybe sound a little bit confused because she's mourning the death of her you could say her best friend since she's um has this struggling with her own situation she met um judith jody jody jody, jody. And they became such a close, 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 close friends. So please bear in mind that her mind is not there with us tonight, but she's going to try her very best to make sure that we understand what's happening with her now. Okay, 
guys so thank you so much appreciate the life and um christine my first question to you today i know if you want to shed some tears it's fine grab your kleenex box make sure you have it okay because we're going to go down some memory lanes you know that i'm fine i think i'm i think i'm okay today i'm fine today okay during the interview if you wish me to stop or if you wish some of the questions are too hard you just let me know do not be afraid. okay thank you yeah okay just let me know okay okay so my first question to you how did you find out that you were sick with cancer all right first of all i want to tell everybody welcome and thank you so much for joining um do i consider it a sickness hmm. It's a disease, yes, um, chronic illness, I guess. How did I find out? I was seven months pregnant at the time with my second son. And I was just simply running my hand over my breast. I was laying down in, the, in my kid's room. I just run my hand over my breast and I felt alone. One moment, please. I think that's Teresa. Hi, my Tina. Hi everyone, appreciate the live, appreciate the live, please do. That's Teresa, our co-host, thank you guys. Hi, so, how I are you? The live all along. <laughs> okay, you, oh, so you heard us. Okay, good. I thank did. You. Hi, welcome. Thank you, Teresa, nice to meet you. Nice mm -hmm. to meet you, dear. And Teresa is from Ontario. Okay. Yeah, Teresa is from Ontario. She's in the same province where um Jody passed away. Yeah. Jody passed away. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, so you're so aware she, of the situation? Yes. Nadine updated me. She did. She did. My condolences. I'm so sorry to hear that. That's fine. It's you know it's one of those things. It did. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So back to the question, Nadine. So I first found out I was the one. I, it wasn't a self-diagnosis. It was just simple me just touching my breast. As I said, I was seven months pregnant with my second son, and I felt alone. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you're seven months pregnant. You're thinking it's probably hormonal. It's probably milk ducts that get all um, you know clogged up and whatever. But in the back of my mind, I was still thinking that it could have been a possibility right you didn't you don't want it to be but you're not ruling it out right it's not that you're accepting it but things happen so um that is how i found out went to my OBGYN. she referred me to the surgeon and then it was um that's where the journey started. No, I won't get in, in, in depth too much with the medical part of it and what happened then and there. Because to me, I felt it was it could have been handled a lot differently. Um, however, when you get a news, when you get a news like that and knowing that you have nobody in your family that um has ever been diagnosed what do you do you start to think back okay what did i do what happened where where did this where did it all go wrong so that is how um i found out and of course i'm not going to tell you that the doctor said that i could um do surgery at the time because the first thing was that we were um it was supposed to be a surgery. He did mention to me that he has had um, situations with persons who were pregnant where they did the surgery while the person was pregnant. Once again, I'm not telling you that he had suggested it to me, um, but he did give me scenarios that it could have been a possibility. Looking back at it, I really don't think he had suggested it to me, but... Um, it was an option. Okay. I didn't think that option, and I didn't thought about it as an option at the time because I just wanted to deliver the baby, and I just wanted to have a. I wasn't thinking about any kind of surgery. I wasn't thinking about C-section. I wasn't thinking about cutting off my breast. I was thinking about nothing. That I was just thinking about pushing my child like I pushed the first one. That is pretty much what it was about. So I didn't do anything. 
I got the information. A matter of fact, we did a biopsy and no, we did an ultrasound. From the ultrasound, they saw where the tissues look, where, you know, it was mm -hmm. funny. So we went and we did a biopsy. I left Jamaica simply because my situation at the time was very stressful. Everything was just stressful. And you know what? When you make certain decisions, you don't know. I'm impulsive. So I make a decision based on how I feel. I'm emotional. I, I react based off my emotions at that time. I think I still do, but not that much. So I opted to leave just because I wanted a clearer space. I just wanted to be in another space environment and pardon environment right i wanted to be in another space another environment and just to zen yeah so i went i had the baby and i came back to jamaica and that is where we did we so i came back to jamaica saw the surgeon he scheduled the surgery for the following week we did the mastectomy and then um then i was referred to an oncology and then from there it's the journey to start okay since you have um answered um some of the questions that i had or Teresa had in to ask you this one question that I did not hear you say anything about how did you react when he told you that you were diagnosed? How what was your reaction? I was scared, but let me tell you something. I'm this type of person. I'm going to take it. I'm. A, I'm going to take it like a G in the office. Like you going to shoot a shot, and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to take the bullets. But when I left the office, I felt like my entire world crumbled. I felt like I didn't know what to do. I felt lost. I felt like the whole situation was surreal. I was like, I just hear Wednesday. I never just hear Wednesday. Like, you yeah. know, it, 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 it's one of those situations where you hear about it happening, but you're not expecting that it's going to happen to you. Right? So, of course, you're scared, you're terrified. You, you have a young baby, you have an older son, you have a family, you have friends. Like, the first thing you think about is death, right? Like, mm -hmm. yes. dead. Jesus, me, I'm going to you. You're not, you're, not, you're not, you're not good. Come from, from cancer, you're going to die. That is all I could. Not that I could picture it, but that's, what, that's how I felt. I felt like it was a death sentence, basically. Mm -hmm. But I was reassured by. A nurse was the first person who said it to me. Say, listen, Christine, this is not this is not a death sentence. You have yeah. persons who have made it through, so you can do it too. Yeah. Pretty okay. cool. as, as you said that you had, you mentioned that you have friends, family members. So, who did you mostly turn to when you were first diagnosed? Um, my friends. My friends were there for me. I had I, I had an excellent support system. Mm -hmm. Like nobody got tired of me crying. Nobody got tired. Mm -hmm. and, and mind you, I really tried to hold up as as best as I could. A lot of people, when I first got diagnosed, a lot of people really didn't know what was going on. Just my close friends and family, and I kept it that way because I didn't want people to, to pity me because at that time. If I if I started to talk my story, I would just burst into crying. tears. I would just burst mm -hmm. into tears. So I was very skeptical about who I told, simply because I felt like I was going to be scorned. I kind of felt ashamed in a way, and but in the back of my head, it played with me because I'm like, why am I ashamed? I didn't call this on myself, but I don't know if ashamed is the word, but I felt like. I think I was a little was, embarrassed. Was, like a little embarrassed. A little embarrassed. Yeah. Right. Right. For some, yeah. Exactly. And I was like, okay, how 
how how could this happen like that's all i said like why me how come those were all the questions but i went through it day by day minute by minute and i, I i'm not going to tell you that i have it figured out but they were my friends were one of the most supportive said like when you say carry food for you, when you can't move, when you say finish chemo and you needed to call somebody to talk to, even just to cry to, it's one of those. Those were the people that I had around me. My mom, everybody was there for me. Everybody rallied around me. My co-workers, you know, mm -hmm. they, it was, it, it was, I could feel the love. I could feel the support, especially from my co-workers. They were magnificent. Like, you couldn't ask for you, you 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 really can't go through this journey by yourself to be honest this is not a journey for 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 the person going through it and i'm not going to tell you it's easy for the caretakers either it cannot be easy right so um it's one of the it's it's it, it's one of the it, it's a good thing to have good support around you to help you to to bear the burden to you know like when jesus yeah. carried the cross you have people hit yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was a lot yes. it was a lot it was a lot that was very good because they help you because you just had a baby you just have a newborn baby so you need a lot of support that was very good and what about the children's father were there was he very supportive too as best as he could Okay. As best as he knew how to, eh? Right. As yeah. best as I, I, I can't say. As best as he knew, he knew how to. Him, okay. I don't know. He, he showed up as best as he could. Oh, 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 okay, okay. okay. So, um, with this, comes this whole journey that you've been on. How has this changed your whole perspective on life? Like, how do you look at life now oh, after God. being through what you've been through? Um, I look on life a whole lot differently, to be honest with you. Like, I, I said it in another interview. Before cancer, I was surviving. I think I'm thriving now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, hold on, because I have, there, 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 there are persons on this life, which I must say, because a lot of people thought that I was in remission. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that I'm probably still in I'm still in remission. I'm calling it, I'm calling it. But it's um all right, let me let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Let me let me let me tell you the story. So when I was first diagnosed with it, it wasn't at any stage. It was a lump in my breast. And when they're doing um when they're doing their testing, it's dependent on the receptors. So there are different hormones so when you're doing breast cancer, you can be um, estrogen positive, you can be progesterone positive, negative, HR. So there are different categories. At first, when I was first diagnosed, I was diagnosed as, and I don't remember all the medical terms, I was diagnosed as being HER2 positive. So being HER2 positive means that they it's the HER2 receptor that is feeding the the cancer cells. Because remember, everybody has cancer cells. I learned right, that. right. Everybody has cancer cells. So it's right. no um a growth or an overgrowth of the cells that cause them to get out of whack or to get out of um out of function, right? So when that when that diagnosis happened. I started chemotherapy. I did eight rounds of chemotherapy. And on the fourth round, I started targeted chemotherapy. So I was getting an a, um, a injection um, every month called Herceptin. That is to block that HER2 sept, um, cancer cell mm -hmm. from producing. So it mm -hmm. forms a barrier, right? Mm -hmm. um, at, I was supposed, so I did eight rounds. At the end of the eight rounds, and I'm going to be honest with you. The doctors did not make it any easier. And I did this in Jamaica. The doctors did not make it any easier. And maybe it was just me at the time. I don't know. I I left it all in their care. 
thinking that they had my best interest. I'm not going to tell you that they didn't have my best interest because there was a whole lot of people that they were dealing with. So I, mm -hmm. it was at the end of it that I felt like I was just a number. Okay. okay. And a one size fits all. And I, I couldn't function that way. Right? Mind you, I still wasn't going to Google because Google was just oh. showing me death sentence. <laughs> I could I couldn't read nothing, nothing, everything or missing me said, mm -mm, mm -mm, I can't say this in the name of Jesus. I lock it off. I don't want yeah. to hear no mm -hmm. more, right? Yeah. So all I want to hear is positive. Even if it's not so right. tough, tell me say I saw go. Tell me you know what yes. you're not negative. Yes. So I went. So what I did, I tried to make my chemo visit as pleasant as possible. So I was friendly with the nurses, you know, I was because to be honest with you, I was there from probably six o'clock in the morning and I didn't leave until probably ten o'clock at night. That's a whole day. Yeah. Right? Oh, and the, yeah. the, the chemo itself was probably three to four hours. Oh. So, so waiting. Majority of it is waiting. Okay. Remember, okay. you're at the hospital. Don't get me wrong, the nurses are beautiful. They're wonderful, mm -hmm. right? As a matter of fact, I was shocked at the, at the, knowing how the hospital is, the public system, I was shocked at the facility, oh. how clean it is, to be honest. Yeah. Yes. See, it was just the waiting process, but they did the best they can with what they yes. had, yes. with the resources yes. they had. So yes. guess what yes. I do? There were times when I went and I just really thought that, it would have just disappeared, to be honest with you. And every time mm -hmm. I go, it work and it don't work. And every time I went to the hospital, I would get so down. I would either leave the hospital crying because me just mm -hmm. frustrated. And I just felt, at one point, I felt alone for personal reasons. But I still had my friends. I still had my yeah. team. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of people didn't know the depth of what I was going through. But mm -hmm. as I said, I put on a, I, I still put on a, a, my face and I still go out there and I still I, I'm a still I'm still a believer of not looking like what you're going through. And as long mm -hmm. as God gives me health and strength, I, I still think that you, you still go out and you still put on your best. Mm -hmm. and you still put out your best sometimes even before i get to that even when i started at the go for me i said the people that probably not even go give me no money they will say she don't look like she's sick you know what i mean? yes. so i felt yes. bad at one point like but it was it was needed it i i felt like i needed it so when i did chemotherapy at the end of my eight round i had to do radiation no this wasn't all documented and told before it was just like i was going through i felt like a guinea pig so it's after one step in here oh you have to do this step because there's a little spot in here that they want to burn out so we went through and we did it and i paid how much money to get it done and mm -hmm. then um because of what they told me you know you could spot me not think say anything but i said all right after radiation everything is going to be fine so I routinely you have a CT scan to do. So after I did my CT scan after radiation, once again I couldn't read the CT scan. I don't know what it's saying. Yeah. yeah. I didn't pick up, but I never had to pick up on it. Okay. So I had to meet with my um I had to meet with the uh is it radiotherapist? I had to meet with him. Yeah. I think it was a month or two after. So I when when I went in, I had the results, I gave it to him. And he said to me, he read it and then he come and he said, I remember him touching like down my spine. And I found it weird. He didn't say he feeling any pain. And I said, No. And he's like, Well, you are gonna have to order you to do a bone scan. So I said, a bone scan for what? Mm. You're seeing um lesions in my bone. Mm. Said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I said, okay. So we said, all right, we're going to do it. I said, all right, this is just another process. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get it done. 
But only to rise, I know that I couldn't afford that bone scan because that bone scan was like 1300 US. And I said, mm, I just paid for it. Mm -mm, there has to be some other way. So I had my routine visit with my oncologist. I went to see him. The result, he had the docket. And he said, I remember going in his office and he said, We're going to have to start another round of chemo. I said, oh, Wow. What do you mean? He said, Because the lesions are showing cancerous in your T, T, whatever you call that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. But the radiotherapy said that we have to do a bone scan to see if it's cancerous. So you're saying it is cancerous? He's like, Yes, the result shows it's cancerous. I was like, Wow. So I, I cried because I really thought the journey would have been over already. I cried. He said, God, you have stretched me. Really. He like, you have stretched me. God, mm -hmm. the man, you have stretched me. So at the end, I said, okay. We started another round of chemotherapy. One round, we, we did the CT scan. It wasn't working. It took me a while to do that. It took me a month before I actually did it before I actually did it because I told myself I wasn't going to do any more you know, because this must be some because I don't feel no pain that's what I'm saying I, say, I don't feel no pain it's like something wrong this is this 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 not right it's mm -hmm. not like what you're saying it's not right it's just not right no I'm not accepting it went back to do whatever you know I had to go in did another CT scan then you hear said tumor in my lungs so what? So at this point, I was like, all right, let's start chemo. I started chemo. Did one round of chemo. We did a CT scan. And um, it, it wasn't responding at this point. So now we had to try different an alternative treatment. Mm -hmm. So he decided to put me on oral chemotherapy. We did oral chemotherapy, which wasn't so harsh, which would have targeted because at this point they're saying it's HER2 positive. So they're mm -hmm. not going to find in hormone therapy to target the tumors. Mm -hmm. I did that. And trust me, it was not cheap, but I had insurance at the time. I still had to work so I could get insurance. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that happened. At this point, COVID had hit. So this was 2020. So I was diagnosed in 2019. This was 2020. Because I still go still in and out of hospital every month, every three weeks. At one point, I heard that the the drug was the, the tumors were responding to the drug. So we continued. We continued another three or four cycles, I believe. We did another set of scans. And more tumors came up. So the ones in my bone were stable, but the ones in my lung, they were multiplied. Right? Yes. So at this point, I confused. I said, No. I said, No, God, this is not happening. And I remember every time I went into the oncologist's office, he kept asking, You short up your breath? And I said, No. That's a way. So we start check the mask. I will wear a mask at this point. I mm -hmm. want to shut up and I don't know. I want to something. And I say, no, man, I'm not sure. But someone, all right, I'm fine. And I remember I went into the car and I bawled. I don't know how I drove home. I cried. I cried. I cried. I cried. Because nothing that this doctor is telling me, I'm not feeling anything. So, God, what is happening? I decided that. I was going to get a second, um, a second opinion. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I went and I got a second opinion. The doctor said to me, the only thing they will recommend is for me to do and um, to do a, um, another a biopsy, right? Because if we're, we're doing targeted treatments and it's not working, that means it's a possibility that. I want to get this correct, that the, the receptors can change or the hormones can change from what it was originally diagnosed as. I think that's what it says. So just as if you have 
two cells and it mutates the mutation now in the other parts of the body can be different from what it was originally oh. mm -hmm. okay. Right? okay just like, like how you have twins and they have it's a possibility that they have two different genes mm -hmm. that is what that's layman's term so i said all right but they wanted to go in on the spine to do to do it oh wow wow so when when I came back to Montego because this was done in Kingston. So when I came back to Montego, none of the radiologists wanted to do that. I I got mixed signals from them, you know, the run around and so I said, Well, if none of them don't want to do it, well, give me back the pills. I'll just continue with the pills mm -hmm. work on most work because your spine have a whole different nerve in it. I don't want to yes. We continued to continue. There were side effects. My hands were stripping. I was getting like black spots, but it wasn't any of the harsh side effects like some people had. To be yeah. honest with you, chemotherapy, other than my hair falling off, I didn't. And I had a couple of nausea here and there and stuff yeah. like that. It wasn't as bad as. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lot of people went through. Right. So the first. The first couple treatments, yes, I was sick. I was vomiting. I couldn't keep doing anything. It was, I was in a lot of pain. But it, it got better after a while. So at this point, I was still doing the, um, the oral treatment and stuff. Still doing all of that. Mm -hmm. What had happened was, no. I... The, the treatment wasn't working, so it didn't make sense at this point. The um, insurance ran out on, because I had to take the injections for a whole year. So the oh. year had ended. So okay. in order for me to get back the injections, I would have to go through Ministry of Health to make sure that I was qualified and make sure they could have mm -hmm. what about me the medication. the same medication if it's not working a biopsy has to be done and she was adamant that a biopsy and she said so nobody can make no sense to spend no more money come to her if we're not doing a biopsy we're not it, it don't make any sense oh so we decided that so she said okay she referred me to do a biopsy on the lung I went through the process. Of course, I had to get medical clearance. We we had to do um, COVID testing, all of that. I was waiting for them to schedule schedule it to be done in um, St. Andrew's Memorial. But within that time, I had seen a neurologist. When I had seen a neurologist, he was the one who pre pretty much showed me everything plain as day. He says, he showed me all the tumors that were in my bone, basically. So wow. he came and said, all of these stuff, it's just a whole to say it's stable. It's a whole to put something going on right here. So I got scared. I was taking, I was the only one there because I was the only one going to my doctor visits and stuff at this point because I felt I was strong enough to take all of the information oh. in. So I got really scared and I called my family and I said, listen, I'm not like I'm not like all this soul. I'm not like what the doctors are saying. I don't like I, I don't like anything that's going on at this point. I don't feel like my insurance has run out. I don't know what else to do at this point. So that's when the GoFundMe started. And, okay. then, and then I decided to come to the States to get further treatment and further stuff. So when I came, it's a whole different thing that people because it's a long story. So when I came here, I started to see a, a, a doctor. When I saw the doctor, they, the oncologist, they sent for the, the slides in Jamaica. So at this point, I had gotten medication, the same medication like what I had in Jamaica, to start taking. When I was about to start taking it, I got a call. She said, hold on, don't start taking those medications because 
she's in a discrepancy with what was originally diagnosed. I said, huh? Mm. So she said, this is a possibility why the medications weren't working because we're not seeing where you're hurt to positive. So I said, huh? So she said, yes, a, a biopsy would have to be done over. I said, okay. I found a surgeon in New York. I found a surgeon in New York who was able to get me to do a biopsy and get me on the hospital there. We did a couple surgeries. We did a couple um, scheduled the biopsy. They did a long biopsy. We waited a couple weeks. And the results, this is now in 2021, October. That when the results came back, it was a whole nother reading. I was actually ER positive. So I tested positive for my estrogen, for the estrogen level. So it's the estrogen that is feeding the cells or the tumor. Oh, okay. the estrogen. So now I... It sounds like a misdiagnosis based on the fact that they were retesting the previous slides mm -hmm, that they mm -hmm. had received, right? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I said, okay, that pass on gone. We just have to know. Move on. Move on. Yeah. So we, so they said, they, they gave me the plan. They said, okay, this is what you're going to have to do. You can either get um injections for one month to slow down the growth of the estrogen so now they're gonna put my body in menopausal menopause. Post -menopausal, yeah. right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or i can have my my ovaries removed oh mm -hmm. and um i'll be on pills for the rest of my life yeah. okay i said okay i'm not coming every month to get any injections so please remove my ovaries oh Okay. I oh. yeah. And I don't think all of what my body went through, I was even going to plan to have. I mean, more children, right? More children. children. Mind you, I was going through a divorce at this time. Mm -hmm. right? Wow. Oh. Oh. Guys, oh. please share the live. Please share the live, guys. Please, please. The very interesting topic. Please share the live. Thank you. So, before all of this, so in 2018, when I was first diagnosed, 2019, before I started chemotherapy, I had spoken to, I forgot his medical term, but he's not an oncologist. And I remember that, gen, that doctor saying to me, Christine, if you don't get your emotional side in check, it doesn't matter how much chemotherapy you do, the cancer will never go away. And to me, he said, I put that aside, you know, but it made sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, and I, and I put that in because now it makes sense. Like today, it makes sense. Yeah, yes. So, so I decided to have my ovaries removed. I got my ovaries removed in, last year. And um, I now take oral medications mm -hmm. and pain tablets here and there. And if I don't feel like taking it because I feel overwhelmed taking a whole bunch of pills. I don't take it. And I pray and I say, God, right. No. On this journey, I met Jody. May her soul rest in peace. I met Jody on this journey and we connected. I've never met her physically, but we spoke every day for the oh. last two years. Every single day. And if I had two or three days that pass, we, we call, we say, wait, two. Oh, go on. Yeah. Too long, too long. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and we connected because our stories were so similar personally yeah. and medically. Medical. Right? Okay? Yeah. Um she is also a makeup artist and she has she's also a boy mom. Right? Mm -hmm. So we connected. No, after doing all this they did surgery. Um, mind you, I had a left breast mastectomy with the intention to have reconstruction, but with never have the money and with the pain that I went through to have the mastectomy, 
I didn't even bother thinking about having reconstruction, to be honest with you. So I slightly thought about reconstruction last year, but the doctor mm -hmm. said, not at this stage, he would recommend having it. So I said, okay. okay. I've mm -hmm. gone, you know, how much years. I can, mm -hmm. I can go. I can continue. Yeah. Does I, do I feel less of a woman sometimes? Yes. It mm -hmm. took me a while to actually be confident about my body. It took me a while to, to, to love myself how I love myself now. It took me a it took me a while. When I said it take a while, it took a while. I didn't know your breast would have so much impact. But it also changed my whole thought process on life because it's breast mm -hmm. like how much people do surgery and not, not do their breasts. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. breast. Mm -hmm. So I said all of this to say mentally you have to where I am mentally, I never thought so. So I never thought that I would be intentional in what goes through or what comes into my mind. I never ever thought that energy would be so important to my well being. So if your energy don't match my energy, we don't. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're not going to coexist at all. No, it will never happen. I'll be one of the most miserable person ever if the energy is strong. And I have to be mindful as well as what I do and how I do it and who I'm around. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is what has changed with me. It took a while for me to get to this place. When I tell you that 2021 I ball, I never think I, I never think I never think we could have stopped crying. And it is so critical to have strong people in your corner. Mm -hmm. So my friends, and I can tell you, especially my best friends, my team now was one of them who I could call on and I could cry. It didn't matter what time or the hour it was. You need that, you need that critical friend that you can call and you can cry on. You understand? Mm -hmm. So yes, I pray. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you all of this. None of these, even though my physical friends were very supportive, I would not have been here today if it wasn't for God. I'm a I'm an advocate for Jesus Christ right now because certain things me can't explain. Even though I'm talking, like when I'm sitting on the side, but and I, and I tell you what happened last year, November, three days after my birthday, I was hospitalized. I was in the process of moving, and just then I started to cough up and it's just pure blood blood coming from my nose blood coming from my mouth i can't explain when i say blood i mean like i coughed up a ziploc bag a gallon half a gallon bag full of blood right mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. i went to my deathbed and back because after me i admitted in the emergency room the next day they had me in the icu when i woke up i had strings all about and were connected to one bed like i couldn't move i remember when i woke up i wanted to move when i realized i was i was tied to the bed with oh. it in my mouth i think i have a post somewhere on 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 instagram about it and it took me a while to post it and after that i disconnected from social media for a while because you know what i was hearing about too much death Oh. There was every time I look, it was another warrior that died. It was somebody that died from cancer, and not nothing. Nothing is harder than hearing somebody passing away from cancer. Even if I don't know the person, it triggers something in me. I get I get triggered, right mm -hmm. to the point now that I have to do therapy. And mm -hmm. yeah, Jamaican society might feel that it's mad, but it's. I I suffered a lot of trauma mentally mm -hmm. and in order for me I could not have done all of this if I never have good support mm -hmm. or if God wasn't leading me to my destiny helpers you understand? Mm -hmm. God would have connected me to destiny helpers right along the way I was never alone there was always somebody there it's like a relay so when you pass on the mountain somebody else was there who could it be but God? Yeah. 
But God, I took a leap of faith coming here. You understand? Enough people wouldn't do it. Thank enough people couldn't do it. You. Enough people Thank you. couldn't Thank do it. You. And I have two children the same way. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And the only thing I get up and I say, God, just, 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 just give me more life. Just give me yes. more life. Not take my life yet, God. Because they're still young. And not even that they're still young. Because I just found purpose. Someone said, God, do not take my life. I'm <laughs> not ready yet. We're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Give me 50, 60 more years. But I see the rapture. No take yeah. more health and strength. And I realized like I had to be specific in what I was asking for and what I wanted. Because it's not easy. I think I still I, I, I subconsciously I have I have dreams and it's like I feel like I'm being I wouldn't say tormented, it's on, that's on rough, but it feels as if, and even with Jody's passing, it seems as if, yes, say, are you next? You know, you don't want to say, is it? You feel like the world is closing on you now, I, eh? Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. And, um, so sorry. And I just have to talk to myself yeah. and, Sometimes I think I schizophrenic the way I talk to myself because I really have to talk to myself. I really have to tell myself to self calm down, calm mm -hmm. down. And two minutes, and my coach will tell my coach says to me, Christine, and I have to keep reading the book that says you're calm and relaxed. You're calm and relaxed, and yes. that is what I have to keep saying to for literally for two minutes before yes. actually manifest. Yes. And okay. And sometimes I look in the mirror and I, I, I think that's a man. No, that's not talking to you. Sometimes I'm like a man. But guess what? It brings me to a place of sanity. So that yes. myself yes. brings me to yeah. sanity. It brings we, don't me to we don't think you are. We don't think you are. You're just expressing yourself. It's okay. We don't and, think you're crazy. And this is just my journey. Everybody's journey is different. Yes. Everybody's journey is different. Let me tell you Everybody's journey is different, so I might can give ad I can give you advice. I can just tell you what I did during. Yes. Yes. I'm not, and I'm going to put a disclaimer. I'm not no medical doctor, but to be honest with you, yeah. everything yeah. in life is a learning lesson. Nothing in life is coincidence. I nothing happens by coincidence. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, everything by divine connection. So everything that happens, I don't think is an accident. People who I meet, it's not by accident. Yes. So it's a lot deeper than just meeting somebody and saying, hi, I'm moving on. That is how I look on life now. That is how life happens now. And everything connects because now we're in the same magnetic space. We're now, we're now I don't know how to explain it. It's like everything and everybody connects. It's nothing happens by mistake. Nobody walks in your life by mistake. Nobody leaves your life by a mistake, right? I used to hang on to people because they've done something good. I don't think that they should leave. But people come in your life for a season and for a reason. I take the lesson. I don't hold on to things anymore. Okay, the, the season has ended. All right, fine. I'm, I'm going to. So I'm going to accept that I'm going to move on because too many times you hold on to things. Right. And reading. So fifteen. Yes, go ahead. So, through, throughout your ordeal, you know, getting a treatment for cancer and everything, you have built this solid network around you. Perfect. So with all the good positivity that you endure with I, your network, right. it helps I, you to be stronger. I know. To be honest yeah. with you, there's always somebody who I can call on. Right. And if there's nobody who I can call on, I fall on my knees. Me never know. Me, listen, me never know how to pray like how to pray. No, no. Mm -hmm. so if somebody, and that's what it do. Makes it stronger. If somebody can yes. call me for advice, and I feel like yes. I don't have the right, right advice, I say, come okay. on, I pray. I can pray. Pray. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't want to scare you up, so I can pray. I can pray for you. Yeah. Yes. I'm not get the answers right now, but believe me, God. But you're gonna get it. God is gonna. You're gonna exactly get it. God is gonna. Thank you. Yes. yes. Right? Um. The persons who I've met along the way mm -hmm. and 
believe me, they check up on me. They 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 they, they either message me or they send me a, a song or something. Yes. You know, to to show that you they still remember me. They're still, they're still close. It's still they're still close by. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's still, still close. close. Because to be honest with you, in the last year and a half, it's probably about I've I've seen six persons die from cancer. Sixteen. Oh. From your circle? I'm so sorry. So Whoa. imagine all of that. There was one lady that I I I I literally I helped. She she could not manage chemo anymore. She decided she's gonna go back to Jamaica. She's gonna find alternative. Whoa. And I got scared, like, at, at some point, I get scared and I and I disconnect myself because I just don't want to hear the bad news. Yes. I don't want to hear the bad news. So I resurfaced when I think I'm strong enough. I'm going to say, all right. Because one of the hardest things is when you get yourself in a rabbit hole and you can't come mm -hmm. out. And you can't mm -hmm. come out. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. even though this passing, I felt myself going in a rabbit hole. I was I was locked in the house for two days. And I said, God. Hi, viewers. I Thank said, you for coming on. Please share the live. I said, Hi, guys. I think it's not happening. Nope, it's not happening. It's not happening. I'm not staying at this place. I'm not. And I felt like I could get out of it by myself by praying. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't happening as quickly as I wanted it to happen. Chris so I, I, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Is there anything that you wish you you had did before you started the treatment? Is there anything that you think you should have done on your side before you started your treatment? No because I was pregnant at the time. Okay. I can't say maybe I should have done surgery when I was pregnant. Maybe it wouldn't have gotten hairoxy. Maybe it wouldn't have gotten to that level. But as well, there were normally, normally, um, normally when they're doing a mastectomy, Lymph nodes would have been removed. There was no uh -huh. removal. Oh. So with me, I'm thinking that after the surgery is done, then everything is going to be fine. Mm -hmm, you know, so mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything. I was just going based off what the doctor said. Okay. So I, okay. I don't think there was anything. The only thing I think I probably could have done was not worry so much. But how do you tell somebody that they have cancer and then don't worry? Right. That's the worry. Of course, you're gonna worry. It's a natural reaction. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you're gonna go. It's a yeah. natural defense to human. Yeah. It's a natural yes. reflex. Yes. But you know what I mean. So it's just like I, there's nothing I could have done differently. I don't think there's anything I could have done differently because even yeah. when I found out and I didn't do anything, I went cold turkey. Like I literally, I cut off a meat. Everything was green. Like people are probably wondering why did I remain so thin even after I had baby, but I had changed my diet. I couldn't Completely. keep it up. Couldn't yeah. keep, keep it up so long, but it was hard. But it's still it's it's a process. Everything is a process. It's a learning process. Um, and I tell people that this did not come to kill me, and I and I believe it. I believe it to my core. It never come to kill me. It came to make me stronger because That's it. it it brought out a lot of things that I didn't know. That I had in me, you know, a lot of things that yes, I didn't expect. Like even on this very platform, like I'm not thinking that I'll be doing interviews. I mind you, when I was young, I always thought of myself speaking publicly. But yes. you know, there you, yes, you, are. And you have to really, you really have to be careful what you manifest or what you speak into the universe because mm -hmm. what I do at all. Yeah. So you yes. really have to be careful of that as well. Do I think all diseases are curable based on what I've read? It is. But it is. All diseases, yeah, it is. All diseases are curable. curable. All. But yes. do we have the mindset to do it? It's all about the mindset. It's, I'm telling you, it is. It is. Christine, you be in the right mindset. Can I ask you a question, please? The doctors in the USA told you that 
you were misdiagnosed in Jamaica. They didn't say I was misdiagnosed. They said mm -hmm. that there was discrepancy in the diagnosis. Discrepancy. Okay, so you were treated in Jamaica for something that you did not had in the first place. I didn't hear any other doctor say that. That is just me saying based off what the doc based off okay. the fact okay. that they okay. tested the old samples. Okay. 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 Doctors protect doctors, so you know it is. I'm still alive, so I Yes. And and that's the important thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't care. I'm still alive. I'm not. I mean, if I sit down, uh, there, there is a point that I got emotional about it because once again, I feel like it could have been handled differently, or it could have been handled with a little bit more care. But um, was it because I didn't have the money? Was it because I don't know? I don't know what it was. Okay. I don't know what it was. But at the end okay. of the day, you're you um, here. God here with that testimony, right? And yeah, yeah, with that. And maybe there's somebody else out there with the same yes. thing. I can tell you for Jody, Jody went to three different doctors. She oh. went to three different doctors, and all of them told her the same thing it was not cancerous. Oh, 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 what? So, in her case, they waited way too long. It was way too long before she started treatment. What? Oh. Oh wow! But Jody, she also found out. I think it. I think she found out in twenty nineteen. Okay. Right. When was that? When did in you 20, say? Twenty nineteen. Oh, nineteen. Oh, okay. 19. okay. Far. Maybe, maybe the cancer was far in stage. Maybe right. Could be at the time. Yes, at the time. Yes. When, when they because decided. I mean, if she went to three doctors and they said no, it's not. Must have been a while. Right. Well, I don't know. I don't know what. I hers was the same thing. Breast cancer. It was breast cancer. Okay. So she was. It was breast it was cancer. Persistent. Yes, and it metastasized to her. Uh, Is it that she was persistent? Yes, she was because it just never felt right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Wow. okay. And our, our bodies, our bodies talk to us, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. We, mm. Sometimes we don't want to listen because we don't want to hear the worst news. So sometimes we try to shut it down. Sometimes we try to to not call it what it is. So our bodies will react to a certain thing, or we might feel we might feel a certain way in our body, and we we'll say it's not feel right. But sure, mm -hmm. we still are going right. Mm -hmm. We still are going mm -hmm. to worry about. Okay. And we we'll go our separate. And we we'll go. And we we'll go on our way. Until mm -hmm. it starts to get worse, and it starts to get worse, and then that's when you decide you're gonna do something about it. And it's you know it's probably too late at the, well it's not at that time. Yeah. It, oh, okay. It probably could have been treated what, better. What is your biggest challenge with your treatment and your children? How you you know getting your children to understand what you're going through, especially when you're not at home, you're in the hospital. How does your children cope? Well, now I'm I'm. No, I don't. No, I'm, I don't go to the hospital for treatment. I take the treatment and mm -hmm. treatment is at home. It's oral medication. But before the kids were younger, so my my oldest did not understand. He he knows, oh. and I think he still gets. Um, he doesn't want to. He, he he tries not to talk about it. But oh. um, before it was, it was, it was, it was mainly rough for me. Mm -hmm. rough to leave them and i think mm -hmm. it was just because of how i reacted to the situation because when i was telling him because the first thing is like okay mommy now go have no hearing now mm -hmm. so don't you know all kids kids can be brutal yes. on it yes. sometimes yes. yeah they yes. don't, yes. don't care about the emotion they just go tell you like how it is tell you like it is yes. and i express a scenario i remember when i was when i started doing chemotherapy so my hair started to come out in patches and I was too scared to go to the barber to cut it off. So I took a shave and I shaved it off myself. And I remember him, him coming out and seeing me in the bathroom. And immediately, he just back up. He didn't even turn around. He just, he just, he just cut a reverse and back up and just oh, walk dear. back into the room. And I shut the bathroom door and I started to cry. 
But you know what happened? Mm. It's like at that point, I said, Boy, I probably see some of it done. Mad, no. Come and just. But just take a share and just take it to my head and that and and just shake it off and that was yes. that was that was where it was it was hard it was emo it was emotionally hard for me it was physically hard for me but i still try to remain positive for mm -hmm. them you know yeah. what i mean yes, yes. Yes. I would break down in front of them every now and again yes. because it's so hard to get emotions. So yes. Me, very yes. yes. emotional. Let me say, as you say, I'm a ball. Like, I'm very emotional. So, yes. it was trying to keep my composure but at the same at the same time the composure just couldn't keep. It just couldn't keep. Yes. You know? Like, no. If I need to break down, I probably go in my car I probably drive and break down. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. But I'm doing a lot better now. I don't really break down like that anymore. Mm -hmm. I try to okay. Okay. I try to pray through or I do something to distract me. That's after okay. all. After all, you're still okay. mommy. So okay. you've got to be mommy for the you know, for them. No matter how you're feeling sometimes, mm -hmm. you still gotta remember who you are to them. Exactly. And they look to you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But that's yeah. Pretty Go ahead, Nadine. No, Teresa has a question. Teresa no. has so I want to know, okay, from this point on, where do you go from here now? Live. Live. Like, take each day. Live. Yeah, yes. take like, each day as it comes. Work. Yeah, girl. All right. So, my girl used to own a money, but I have not been mm -hmm. working since probably the last mm -hmm. years, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, I'll do my makeup here, do my lashes here and there and stuff like that. But um, one of the things I had stopped marketing, especially with lashes and makeup, I've been a little bit inconsistent, was when I went into the hospital last year, I was like, I didn't want to, I felt like I didn't want to build my clientele anymore. And then something happened and I would have to not okay. So I was pretty much afraid of the instability i never on i, I yes, was yes. stable i felt like and that's one thing jody and i shared because i remember i said to her i said all right we're going to start a podcast we're going to go back and you know doing makeup yes. and before she left for mexico she said you know what no it was while she was in mexico before she left for mexico she said you know what i don't really want to do anything because i don't want i want she wanted to be completely free of cancer before okay. she did oh, that's what she wanted oh. to me, i was a little bit on the opposite side mm -hmm. go live yeah me go live all if we feel uncomfortable living <laughs> i am going to live that's all yeah that's me. You're strong. Yeah, yeah i felt you got a strong mind you got a strong yes, mind that's how i felt Very so strong. i will push myself to like post on social media even if i don't feel like it you know what I mean? Yeah. I will put on makeup because beauty is what I love. Makeup is what yeah, I yeah. love. Yeah. Looking yeah. beautiful is what I love. Mm -hmm. yeah, so exactly. I would, when I'm at home by myself, I would just play the makeup and just, you know, yes. go forward regardless. Yes. I remember in yes. 21 when I had cut off my hair and bleached it white. At this point, I was doing intravenous chemo. Yeah. Okay. I was oh. doing chemo, but I was still doing chemo. And I remember Jody said to me, Christine, no, because I, I wasn't thinking about no chemical mixture at that time. Call me careless, but I wasn't, <laughs> thinking about, I wasn't thinking about, you know, chemicals and mixtures at this point. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be free. I felt like cancer was holding me back. I felt like, yes, yes. All right. We go wait and wait and wait and wait and what happened? Like it's been five years. Yes. Like this yes. year has been five years. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like what 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 we go do? Yes. So, even though like um no being a member of a church, I remember I was yes. going from church to church and I felt like I want a pastor to pick up in my spirit about Christine. Mm -hmm. I never want to, like at this point, me tell me tell me, I said I'm not sharing my story anymore. 
I'm not saying anything else because no, I'm declaring that I'm cancer free. I'm not okay, owning yes, cancer. Yes, like, yes, I'm not owning cancer. Yes. No, it's like cancer. I'm tired of you. I'm not owning you no more. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. own you. I, I just own yes. you in the name of Jesus. Right? Yes. So I, I had, after the divorce had gone through, I literally had just not even date because I remember at one point my said to people like how oh, I'm going to date a one I'm going to be real a one breast my half like oh, oh, oh how is that like I don't feel comfortable with my car who go upset me and I remember yeah. a lady shared her testimony she said when you find that person that person will love you beyond what they yes, yes. I'm yes. like I really take more to me say look say Oh, like I, I had really given up on love. Like, my, like, mama tell you something. Wow. I give up, I give up. Wow. I just, me and my pity me them. I just, me and them. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm push it too. Miss a single mother's out there, but Lord, single life, single mothering is hard. Hard. It's hard. <laughs> yes. Sir. I know yes. All yes. people do it without side pity me. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Hats off to them. Yeah. It's you know, hard, it's man. Hard. You're going through your treatment, so it's done. Mind you, yes. I had the baby, and the baby was with me at the hospital on the train. Okay. What? And then, like the nurses would keep the baby for me in the in the in the waiting room okay. while I went. I wasn't doing intravenous treatment, but they had to give me treatment for my bone to, oh, yes. to, to stop the to prevent it from. Good. Yes. Right? Yes. Mind you, let me tell you all God good. Because the boat, according to them, bone did fracture. So when I yeah. ended up in the hospital last year, I remember the oncologist saying to me, Mr. Two big man, tick tall white man come in and say, Um, what they must see on the CT scan is not who them see in front of them. Because okay. they're expecting somebody to be in excruciating pain. Okay. Because my bone. We're fractured. We're fractured, yeah. Ooh. Are, but it's are fractured. We're not even it's not fractured. We're not, we're not. Okay. But something was going on. Something was going on. Something was going on. Something was Okay, bone fracture. Sorry, let me get some water. Bone fracture? Okay. I said, God, oh, we're going to do this. Because girls still have to walk, and girls still have to talk, and girls still have to live. I said, yes. I do not take my life yet. <laughs> no, no, God, my ball. I didn't eat for three. I, for the time that I was in the hospital, I did not mm. eat. I did. My mother said, I don't eat. I don't eat. I fruits alone, my feet fine. I don't want nothing. And oh. I give me my prayer all right. I said, I don't want to eat them to get eat too much of this. The fruits have too much sugar. I'm confused. Everything is just a confuse me at this point. Like, I went into a deep dive. Like, Food mode confusion, girl confused. Couldn't f girl decide to all right, love thing out of the game. People move on with them life, and you know, because of your own insecurities, you start to push this on people. So that's the first thing I go tell them. Look here, my can't on a one breast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like they start to put it out there from before mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then i really had to get a hold of myself and say girl stop it girl mm -hmm. behave yourself <laughs> behave yourself yeah man and i i had to walk in line and say look here you're 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 fearfully and wonderfully made god love you you see the scar yeah. where you have is to show yeah. the journey that you've been through mm -hmm. yeah love you for so what I did was I started to love me first. Yes. Me just love me. I'ma just yes. walk, I'ma just get pure compliments. I'ma just take all of the compliments then. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, yes. Walk, yes. Head high, I'ma just take all of the yes. compliments yes. then. Yes. yes. Just start to feel back yourself and to yes. feel, you know, everything and just start to get in the group. I started to appreciate my kids more. I started yes. to enjoy their company more. Yes. You know. I started to just do things with them and yes. do things for me and mm -hmm. 
stay connected to people who love me. You understand? Yeah. Because guess what? At the end of the day, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. We I'm are not long strong. We are, are not perfect. perfect. I've we made mistakes. Are. I'm not going to get up and tell anybody say, oh, I didn't do this or I never do that. But mm -hmm. looking back at it, yes, were there things that you could have done differently? Of course, there were things that you could have done yes. differently. Yes. But you wouldn't have a testimony today if you didn't do it differently, right? Exactly. So That's right. Exactly. I accepted what I have. It, it, it is something that yes. is so tough to accept, but I accept it. Right. Yeah. Me, yeah. I look at myself and I said, All right, I have a talent in, in, in doing makeup. I, I consider mm -hmm. myself very talented, you know, mm -hmm. in and whatever. Yeah. Maybe my breakthrough already here. Because I I make up on makeup enough time. Enough time. Okay. Enough time. I gave up on it enough, a whole heap of time. But I still okay. even though I gave up, I still started back again. Yes. Because what I was what I, what I was doing and what I do with my personal life is compare myself with people and that will steal listen, that will steal oh. everything from you. You start compare yourself with, yes. with that's right. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. It's not healthy to do no, that. No. Nowhere yeah, near mean. healthy. We are are unique in our own ways and i've learned to accept that and i've yes. taken it so on my journey i learned to have a little grace with myself yes i learned not to be too hard on myself and yes. i learned to be patient but it always patient you know but i've mm -hmm. learned to just extend my patience a little patience. bit further yes. so if mm -hmm. something don't happen today how it's supposed to happen it's all right it's it's happen tomorrow and I just watch things unfold. So it never happened when I wanted it to happen, but it eventually it it manifested yes. and it it came to me. You analyze things now. You're analyzing things and go slowly to achieve whatever you want in life. Oh yes, yes. that's the point. My at one point. I think it was in December when um, I met with a new oncology team and they're fabulous, I must tell you. And the man, mm. the inside asked me if I have headache. And I said, I, I said, I didn't know that because then I go to say, no, 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 I stop ask God for strength now. I say God have mercy for me. I have too much strength. Too much. Yes. Yes. It's like I'm so ready for this valley season to be over. Yes. Like ready to start a yes. new chapter. Because we know we're going to always have problems, right? Oh, yes. I don't want to sound ungrateful, but yeah. I want yes. my health back. I want my health restored. Yeah. Yes. And somebody yes. said something so profound to me. She said to me, Christine, the only difference between me and you is that you have a diagnosis. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. That's mm -hmm. it. And you never pay for it. Remember, we never, no one purchased illness. It's not paid for. Like so you don't blame Andrew. yourself. You, you know, so don't blame yourself. For whatever illness yeah, no, happens to you. Remember, yes. it took me, don't blame it took me. You can't blame yourself for you can't blame yourself for illness. Yeah, it took me a whole lot of time. Just it out of the yeah, blue. It yeah, it's a question. It's a question that yes, whenever someone is sick, they will ask, "Why am I? Why is me? Why does it happen to me? Why couldn't it happen to why someone? Not you? Yeah, why we not all, you? We all ask that ourselves that question. It's yeah. a question. To be, to be yeah. honest As a, with you, yeah. it, I have to be careful how I say this because next thing God will give me something tougher. It is, right. <laughs> it is, it, it is a hard thing to carry. It is a mm -hmm. very hard thing to carry. No, don't get me wrong. I know there's people out there with different problems because we all have different Every, problems. Some are tougher. Everybody right. has a problem. Everybody has a problem. Mental health, yeah. sickness, yeah. everything. Everybody. everybody. But everybody. From A to Z, you see, you name it, somebody is is going through something. Something, yes. So, but I, I, it, it, as I said before, it kind of rob you. Cancer kind of rob you in a while, yes. in, a, in a sense. 
but I try to look at the positive parts of it. That I'm still walking, and I have little pain here and there. And not <laughs> like when you hear somebody else testimony, you know. So I have another friend. And I um we don't talk as often, but um we connect. And I remember I messaged her a couple of days ago, and she said, "How are you doing? You know, we're going through." And I said, "Well, you know, I'm on, you know, the medication." And I said, "So what medication are you taking?" And it's tonight she answered me. Two days later she answered me, but I understand that she's busy. And she's taking the same medications that I'm taking. Oh. And then I just feel a sigh of relief. I thank God I'm not me alone. You know, it's yeah. not you alone, you know. It's not you and alone, don't, yeah. Don't wrong. I'm not trying to say more, you're not more people. You're not, you're, not not to say you're not rejoicing. You're not rejoicing. No. Yes, yeah. I'm not rejoicing. But no. I'm no. Yeah. It's like yeah. other people are carrying the same and burden you know as you are. Paul said something to me, and he said, you know, when you think you have it bad, there's somebody else out there that have it worse oh, yes. than you are. Yes. So you can always have to be grateful. You yes. always have to be grateful. If you did, you are stage four cancer, you're broke, and you are you all great. No, sir. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> okay. what, in other words, what I'm saying is that there's probably somebody out there who's carrying that, yes. right? Yeah. Christine, um, with your journey, have you, how would I say, start? Uh, uh, organization, a group, Facebook group, or any type of connection with the outer world, you know, people experiencing the same thing that you're going through? I haven't started, but I'm a part of. Okay. Okay. I'm a part of. So, okay. um, next month, I'll actually be, um, I'll be a guest speaker at a fundraiser. Um, okay. It's a cancer, it's, it's a, it's a, Gardner's House is a, what should I say? It's a cancer foundation. She is a two times breast cancer survivor. And she okay. helps cancer survivors with basic needs. So she helps the families with basic needs. So she okay. helps with my rent for one month already. Okay. So she yes. helps you because what people don't understand is that even though it affects you mentally, it drains you financially. It, it does. It does. It, does. Dream, yeah, it, it really does. Your bills. Yeah. You have to think about taking care of your family. On top but of remember, everything. But yeah. Remember, you cannot take on too much stress on your body. At the same time. The same time. Right. 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 And then you also have to be mindful of what you're eating yeah. as well. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where will where will and the fundraising take place in New York. You know, it's it be hard for Connecticut. Um, I will share. Oh, the in Connecticut. I'll share the flyer with you. I thought I had it with me. I'll share the flyer yes. with you. I it'll put be it on my hard, page. Hard, I will put it. On, I, I will put it on my pages. So it is. It is. My social media pages. It is. It is. It is themed. Um, a sour stop tea party. So oh. I give on okay. sour stop ah. tea. Ah. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. apart from the fact that we want to get dressed up and look fancy in our hats and everything, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. right? Um, I just thought, I just thought the idea was really cool <laughs> to have a to have a to have a pool to have a tea party, and yeah, yeah. Um, that would be April twenty third at the Sportsman Club in Sportsman's Club in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay. okay, okay, viewers. So if you live in the states. And maybe if you're traveling to the States, you can contact Christine and um, her, her, you could contact Christine on her Facebook page. Also, she has TikTok and um, Instagram. On my page, you could see the flyers with all her contact list, the, all the contact list I put it on the, on the poster. It's on my page. And um, she would give you further information. How much is the fundraising tickets for? It's $25. Okay. okay, so what happens if someone wants to? Pretty good. So, what so happens if someone wants All right, so I think I'm not sure. I don't think there's PayPal on there. Okay. But if persons are in the states and they just want to contribute, so say you can't yes. come and you just want to contribute, there is Zelle and there's Cash App. Okay. I think we didn't do PayPal because PayPal takes a percentage. 
Oh, yes, they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I think for now, it's just for persons who want to contribute in the States. Oh, mm -hmm. and you can mail. There's also a check that you can write. Oh, and okay. all that paper mm -hmm. oh. is on the flyer. Okay. I will share that flyer with you, Nadine. Mm -hmm. oh. um, okay, thank you. Am I able to? Or can I? Hold on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I okay. thought I was able to share it. Oh, okay. But I can't. But yeah, okay. that is that is one event and then we're also having another event in October. It's called um Pretty in Pink Ball. Okay. Um, so it's a masquerade ball get all okay. fancy. Huh. And that will be in October. We haven't finalized a date just yet, mm -hmm. but closer okay. to that. Um, of course, okay. um, we'll let you know. Okay. 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 That's great. This, That's this, great. Would be, this would be my last okay. question. Okay, Andrea. If you, no want, to share, if you mm -hmm. want to share with us, what um, words of wisdom would you give to um, someone who's now suffering with cancer or, or any other ill-treating disease? What best advice would you give them now? Stay focused on God. Like mm -hmm. suffering. I don't want to say suffering because whatever you put in your mind or well, words have an impact. Right? Yeah, you manifest it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you say you're suffering, you're indeed going to suffer. Right? Okay. So if you get a diagnosis and I would tell them to trust their instincts. Work with your doctor. And if your instincts tell you that the doctor just, you and the doctor don't have that connection. Mm -hmm. too special. You and that doctor don't have that connection. Then don't be afraid to get a second opinion. A yes. third opinion. Don't be afraid to fight for your life. Because yes. at the end of the day, who go love you more than you? You know what I That's mean? That's right. And fight That's right. with people. In, and I, and I'm, I'm going to implore even people who know of people who are connected. Like, you know of somebody who has cancer or whatever. Reach out to them. One mm. thing that Jamaica lacks, I don't know if it's there. I wasn't privy to it. Is a cancer support group. Okay. Mm. Okay. Right? Okay. Reach out to your friends. A lot of people just push it to the side and probably think that oh, because it's not in their immediate circle. Nine out of ten times, you would know somebody who either have died from cancer, going. We through all cancer. know somebody exactly. that has been it's affected right. somehow. Yes. So, yes. Person. Not yes. only, not only the person who is sick, but also we as individuals who is in that person's life and we know that they're sick, we should also make effort and reach out to them. Of course. So, of course. We too exactly. have a part to play. Exactly. We too Definitely. have a part exactly. to play. And don't, take it for, and don't take them for granted. As a matter of fact, don't take nobody for granted. No, don't take yeah. nobody for That's granted. Right. Because you're here right. today, tomorrow, you're gone. I mean, and I said that tomorrow's even, not promised to I anybody. Even with my girlfriend, um, Jody. I honestly, my soul is okay because I spoke to her the night before. I yes. spoke oh. to her the night before. She couldn't talk, but oh, oh, we, oh. And as I said, we talk every day, so we're always connecting with each other. So you know what I mean. And even her, even with her passing, it kind of gives me a rebirth. Like, and it it, it kind of gives me a recheck on life as well you know that you don't take anything you know, just don't take nothing for granted don't yes don't take anything for granted we can't, I tell, we, we can't do I that my, every day is a blessing my family and my friends who i have around me now yes. ever since her passing i said don't let me don't let me do none of this medical thing alone i used to be by myself I used to be gone whole and gone in a doctor office by myself yeah. and i listen to the doctor and then when I come home, I don't remember I don't know what the doctor said. I said, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. so what I do, I grab somebody from me that the cancer support group who is able to come with me. I said, come yes. because 
trust me, I for, for four years I was going to the doctor alone. I had a girlfriend who she's a medical, she's a medical representative, and she know all of the medical terms. So right. I would want to I would want her to come with me for her to do yeah. the translation. But of course, yeah. you know what? Everybody has their family as well and everybody has their own life to live as well. Okay. So yeah. I didn't yeah. want to feel, you know, even though they never made me feel like I was burdening them too much, mm -hmm. um, they would, would reach out every now and again. So I don't yeah. really I don't really chastise anybody if they're not able to reach out to me every day. No, no. I do it too. Because yeah. as yeah. I said, everybody's yeah. going through something. Yeah. Yes. Everybody, everybody, everybody. And people go through things. Some people go through things silently. They don't let anybody know they're going through stuff, but they really, really are suffering and they do it very silent. So sometimes when you hear someone's demise on social media, you're like, oh my goodness, but I just saw them and they were okay. No, they weren't. They were just going through what you're going through silently. Yeah, they're going through a phase. I just yeah. want to bring um this to everyone's attention, especially um women who live in Canada. I don't know about the states, but maybe you could give us more in depth. In Canada, when we reach the age of fifty, we get a reminder in the mail for us to do our mammogram. And it's you, you know, Canada has um our universal health care system, so it doesn't cost us to go and get our mammogram for free. It's not for free because we all pay taxes and, you know, our taxes goes towards our health care. But when you go to do it, you have your health care card that you show and you make your, your appointment is made either by the phone or in person, whichever you call the center, and you get your mammogram done. And um, I, will show, I have the, the receipts. That's what you call. I have a letter here from my government stating that I need to get mine done. And here, you see all the locations that we have to go right in Quebec. So it's a reminder. See? And um, here, you also, we have a brochure here. This is for Quebec, only Quebec. As you see, Quebec, right, right there. So the brochure has information about breast cancer, and everything there so ladies if you do live in quebec or elsewhere in canada information yeah you can contact the government if you do get mails at home please do not just throw them out it's good that you open the mail open your mail and make sure that it's something important especially when you reach the age of 50. so that that, that this is a what the government is doing is very good because it's bringing out awareness and you know sometimes us women we're so busy with the family we forget to take care of ourselves so the government sending this out is very important and please ladies if you do get one at home open and do whatever and it benefits safe. them Nadine. it benefits the, 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 the it benefits the government because it end up costing them less right because once uh, you are diagnosed, you know the treatment cost is horrendous. But uh, if you get tested, you're <laughs> getting caught early. Viewers, it's a win, win situation on both sides. Viewers, I have a friend. I call her mom. I always take her from my mom. She passed away three years ago. Rest in peace, mom. One day I was at mom's house. And a medication came. The pharmacist came with it. And on the pill bottle, 28 days, 10,000 Canadian dollars. Oh, yeah. 10,000 Canadian dollars. Oh, yeah. For 28 days pill. And this is oh, yeah. like seven years ago. So think about today. 10, 000, over 10,000 Canadian dollars yeah. for the yeah. cancer medication. Yes. Per month. Per yeah. month. Yeah. But thank God. We have our universal health care. She just paid Quebec. Quebec. She's over the age of sixty-five. So Quebec oh. government. Um, we have a different health care system in Quebec than the rest of Canada. We have. We're in Canada, but our government in Quebec, you know, is French. So we, you know, Quebec trying to separate from Canada. That's a different story. But anyhow, our government in Quebec here, we have um, um, the government has a. 
a medical um, plan also for everyone in Quebec. We have an insurance plan too. So I don't know about Ontario. I was living there once, but I don't remember. But we do have it in Quebec. So when we go to buy our medication here in Quebec, we pay a certain amount. Yes. For that. Same thing here. Same thing here. It's the same thing there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Quebec, I don't, I don't remember how many percentage each month. You know, like each month, you get a deduction of five hundred ten. I don't remember how much because. You know, everyone is different, but the government pays a certain mm -hmm. amount for us. As long as you have your LK card. Okay. They do that house in Ontario? That's very good. Well, well, um, it all depends. It, it, it depends. If you have your own um, medical insurance, then that covers it. If you don't have, then you got to pay. But if you're under 25, you don't pay for medication at all. Here? Here you don't pay for medication at all. Here in Quebec is different. It does if you're working, yes or no. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. You have a five hundred dollar you have a five hundred dollar limit for you, each person. In Quebec, but mom didn't pay that much for her medication. Remember, medication is ten thousand Canadian dollars per month. No, I mean five hundred for the year or whatever. No, it's per month. We're we're, oh, per we're month. Okay. deduction per month. Okay. Per month because you could die. Okay. But after the person died tomorrow morning, you know, so it's per month. So each individual here, when you go, you see, oh my god, if I have a one, I could show you. It tells you how many percentage is taken okay. off medication. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you know, yeah. Because sometimes I suffer from period pains, right? And when I go to get my period pain pills, sometimes I pay like twelve dollars per month. And but Quebec watches their pill, okay? They keep a strict, strict log on their medications. They're paying. Very so they want to do that. So. Very strict. For my period pain pills, normally they usually give me a container full. Now they give me like four per month. Four. Naproxen. Yeah. Quebec is very strict when it comes to their medication. And whenever you go to each doctor, they have one system in Quebec now one system so it doesn't matter which wherever you go every doctor has your file so you can't go to doc, doctor said you need medication or doc, doctor no everything is on the one network now quebec network yeah all right i just want to add um i know it might be scary for women and maybe because of financial reasons or otherwise or just not want to know that you have you know you're here so you have cancer but I wasn't old when I found out. It wasn't. I, it wasn't genetics. It's not in my family. We did. We did eight. They tested eighty-four samples, and mm -hmm. everything came negative. Where it came on to genetics, so oh. it was just. It, it can be anything, right? It can be environmental. It could pollution. Be yes. Stress. It could be anything. I think my really was stressed right oh, oh. You want to stress yes it's stress related that's what i think you that's were my dad another stress then oh, oh. wow oh. okay stress manifests itself into you eh? yes. and that's, I, the, that's the outcome I, I, went to be, I was depressed from 2017. Nobody couldn't tell me. We used to cry every day. 2017. Oh. oh, wow. At one point, I found myself going to work and I couldn't stay at work because I'm just that bad. So, stress, I, I didn't, I don't think it's the food. It, it, it could just, I, I was just not managing life properly. Yeah. Oh, wow. You had a breakdown? Did you have a nervous breakdown? Did I have a nervous breakdown? I did. I did. I got afraid of what could have happened. This was before cancer. Okay. Um, I got afraid of what could have happened in life, what might have happened. I started to overthink. I started to... Put holy buttons in my head, 
about the problems that I was going through or the issues that I thought I was going through at the time. So, you know, yeah. not women, we're emotional. So 99.9% .9 of the time, half of the things that we manifest in our head really don't it's, happen. Right? It's just so in our head, and that's it. We <laughs> so start making this little moan into a big old mountain <laughs> because of fear, right? So I was very fearful. Another thing, I cared too much about what people thought about me. Oh. And that really, oh. was really about how I was raised, how my mom raised me. Not okay. that she raised me to care about what people think, but she raised me in such a way that I wasn't a defiant person. So if okay. I'm going to say something, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do okay. it. Oh, okay. I'm not going to do it. I can do it, but or hide out something else but that was Sorry. it so i think a lot of times we need to also look at so when the problems start to happen we need to look at the root of it mm -hmm. because you can't chop off the branch and expect that the tree go dead so yeah. mm -hmm. get to it from the root right so i mm -hmm. have to do a lot of introspect so we live life forward but we understand life backwards uh, yeah. Experience. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I started to do a lot of I'm an overthinker to be honest with you. But what I did, I started to really think about things on a different scale. Like what could have caused this? What I did, what happened? Mm -hmm. There was um, and also after my first child, I did go on um birth control but it wasn't the pill oh. it was mm -hmm. cup of tea i don't know what the medical term is what okay iud right so what that does which i learned afterwards is that it causes a lot of hormone imbalances it does cause hormone imbalances so we think that it is doing something it's protecting us but it is also doing something else Side effect. So, mm. right? so I started to think of well, what did I do differently in my life from my first pregnancy to now? That was it. Plus, I was stressed out a lot. I wasn't managing stress. I wasn't. I never managed life properly at all. I just was just careless and just ball. Just ball. I just never know what I'm going. I just didn't feel like them. I just did that. I just did that. Just go. I don't know. I never feel like I didn't have no purpose. I don't know if you understood. At that time, you did not add any supporting mechanism around nothing at all? No support. Um, I, I spoke to one person. Okay. One person. Okay. Come to chat now. I know. I didn't. I have a network of friends. I'm not going to say my chat now because I know everybody me tell me business. Cairo. Cairo. And everybody tell, like at that point, there were so many stuff that was going on personally that I expressed to my friends, right? But it just didn't feel like anything was happening. It just didn't feel like the situation was corrected. So I would oh. cry and cry and express myself, express myself. But the situation, it's not like a giant sea of wind. You know what I mean? Not mm -hmm. quail, not not quash, not not go down. Something else. No, sir. A me? And I blame myself. <laughs> I, no, I blame myself for a lot of things because I couldn't get the answers that I thought I deserved. I couldn't get the answers that I wanted. You know what I mean? I blame myself for a lot of things. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be blamed, but I take it blame. I, I take it. But at the same time, I think I'm very fair. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to, because it, it's not that I'm a, yeah, I'm afraid I did. I'm not ready for dead yet. But mm -hmm. I got a, no one wants to. Exactly. We're afraid of the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. At that point, it's like, I didn't want to keep anything inside. So I just felt like I had to, I had to use my friends as outlets to just, let it all to make them listen okay. because okay. I never want to keep nothing else inside. I, I I felt like I just I was just going to explode. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. I couldn't tell I, 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 I didn't tell them everything, but it just never 
you never feel like things were happening how you wanted it to, how you wanted it to happen so mm -hmm. you still ended up getting stressed right yes mm -hmm. you know, yeah. feeling yeah. a lot of the things that was happening and you said no you don't know what else for do you look left you look right you don't know what else for do you say, God mm -hmm. help you, and you just nasty not now. Go on, you just nasty not now. Happen, and then, you know, you just make a one, two rash decision, and you just say, you know what, whatever. Until then, the dad know what happened. And then I said, boy, maybe if nobody stressed too much, then this will not happen. That's what I thought. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. But, um, we're innocent. Sometimes we cannot control everything in our lives. Yeah, but I felt I felt bad in a way because nobody knows you don't want this kind of illness to come upon you. Oh no! Oh, absolutely not. But you speak to your therapy because you're doing therapy, right? So you you speak to your coach about all these things that. Yes. Okay, right. And so she could help it's you. Totally, un it's totally, it's totally understandable. You know, I read my books. I will. I try to read my books. Yes. And I try to just start life differently or yes. start life fresh. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay. Just cut you don't want to carry, you you do not want to carry that burden with you, you because no, you're moving from the drive. Yeah, yeah, that's a burden, especially now that you're focusing on your well being. I don't want it to be my subconscious either. You know what I right. mean? Just exactly. Want, you just want exactly. Because a lot of people, you know, they will say that they're okay. Yes. But yes. You're really yeah. Okay. Did you that say it? Okay? No. No. Yes. So that's no, what yeah. happened. So you see, when somebody asks me, "How are you, my pal?" I'm saying, "Ah, you want the truth, or you just want you you have a ears." The <laughs> fluff. Yes. I say, do you want the fluff? Or do you want the truth? Exactly, exactly. Because okay. I'm gonna talk. Okay. So tell me if you're just asking for asking. Yeah, me, you yeah. Hear yeah. Well. You want some fluff, right? Yeah. So then I also tell myself, well, it's not everybody deserves to hear everything about you. It's not everybody. Because let me tell you, you know, even before even if it's a madman on the roadside, I go to the madman and talk to him. Man, man, don't know nothing about me, but me go talk because okay, yes, I can't, I can't take it very, yes, I can't take it very no more. Yes, I yes. Take, okay. you know, some people, yes. people I think are probably very good at holding stuff in, introverts, but I just feel so that. I don't know, I just don't feel so that good. I think you gotta let things out or it stays yeah. in your build yeah. up and build up and build up. You gotta let it out. Some I people, just think I let it out at some point. And hats off to them. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I can't. It, it's it's one of the hardest things to do. It's one of the hardest things to do. To yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Really yeah. yeah Before, and I think everybody needs somebody to talk to. And definitely, definitely, definitely. Always, especially, always, especially nowadays in this world with what's going on yes. in life, or find some way to cope. If you feel like you can't trust somebody to talk, because it's very hard to trust nowadays. To trust people now, like yeah. That's so true. Trust somebody to talk. That's so true. Yes. You know, find somebody that you but, don't know or find something that you love to do to take you you can ask your, yeah. your medical doctors you know your medical team they could direct you to the right group sometimes and, you know your social and they have directed me they have yeah. they have directed yes. me so they can a direct lot of the people who i talk to now and now are older than me so my 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 friends now are 50s and over hello your network. okay that's good yeah that's so good Before, yeah yes and yes I'm, yes and i'm totally comfortable with that well, yeah with that definitely okay great so that's great. so great and we're, we're so happy for you to come on tonight and share your long journey between jamaica and connecticut USA, it's really, really rough. Yes. It's a, you, see, you, you go through a rough battle. But you're, you're a strong person. I must applaud you. You're very strong. And 
Yeah, don't look away. You are strong. <laughs> <laughs> You're a strong person. And um, hopefully you could pass on your strength to other women who are going through the same thing as you are. They need that strength that you have. Because sometimes, especially in, in your network, they don't have, not have that at home. So with your strength, please pass that on. They do need it. Let me tell you know one second. It's God. Because this is sometimes when we can't take it, I just pop a sleeping pill. I ain't going to lie to you. When it comes too much, I say, no, God. Uh -uh. Yes. No, but it's true. At one point, yes. I felt like, um, no wonder people get so addicted to drugs and all these things because mm -hmm. of the, you know, it, pain. Because the doctor readily asked me, "Do you need help to sleep?" I said, "You mm -hmm. have anxiety." Yeah, but yeah. But then I don't take it. I, I I try not to live on it. I try not to because it can be addictive, yeah. right? Because if I can sleep, and if you go the next morning, if you relax, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna tell you yeah. the truth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. By the time I put up my head to sleep, other than that. I'll be struggling or oh, I'll be waking okay. up at three o'clock in the morning and can't go back uh -oh. to sleep. Uh -oh. okay. I mean? So it became it was a lot. It was a lot. Um mm -hmm. to this day, um I have a lot of I don't know if they have a medical term for it, but I, I see a neurologist simply because I have tingling. There's still tingling in my body, in my arms. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right, and in my back. Some people pray for me because you know I yes. We You'll pray be for you. My prayers. Yes. You'll definitely be my prayers. Pray I am just saying that it's so good to see how you've navigated your way through your treatment and you're at this point in your life now that you can look back and say, Oh my gosh, Lord. I'm still going through, but I pass all of that. And you're where you're at now that you can talk about it and you can motivate people. It's really good to see that. Really, really good. And I commend you commend you for your strength you know you're strong you're stronger than you think you are you're really stronger than you think you are really thank you thank you as i said some days i don't know how i do it but i know it's god yeah. it means god yeah. me. and um no i try to as i said i try to change my lifestyle so instead of trying to think of the quick fix of the pills and because you know what these pills do have side effects on your liver and yeah. kidney so I said, yes. I, I, instead of thinking about the quick fix, let's try doing yoga. I'm not going to go into the gym just yet, but mm -hmm. let, me try to yoga. let me try to get my breathing exercises. And my coach did tell me um, our organs don't get enough oxygen. So we have to be mindful. We have to live in a, in a, um, a state of mindfulness, a state of being yes. present. And a lot of times we don't live in that state of being present. We're so busy thinking about the future that we're not living now. Yes. So we, ha I, yes. I, 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 I'm learning how to live in the present, learning how to be mindful, learning to understand that the universe is your oyster and you can get anything you want from it, right? Learning to understand that this disease did not come to kill me, but it came to make me stronger. Okay, and despite my aches and my pains here and there, I'm still going to make it through. I know people who have lived with it. I know a lady who battled for 18 years and after mm -hmm. 18 years, into remission so why me different you, you understand yes. i mean and i tell god i said god if you're right yes. going to be like paul and you're not going to take this thorn out of my side let, yes. let it be bearable for me to live let it that's be it. For me to live. that's it that's it's it that's it that's it that's it you're not taking it but let it be bearable for me to live yes. you know yes. I mean? yes. yeah, think about it. you know you you know you need to do some research on research infrared treatment eh? Oh, infrared treatment. Research it. I will. I'm wondering if that's the same treatment that they do in Mexico, because that's what Jody went through. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yes. I'm, no. Research no. it. That's something you can do in your home. That's something you can do in your home. Oh, I, I don't think it. that's Mexico. I don't think. Uh, I research mm -hmm. it. I research it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I research do you have anything? And I said it's getting close to I know you have to go take care of your kids, so we don't want to keep him yes. longer. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. For yeah. Do you have anything that you want to say to, to us all, your audience? Love yourself, yeah. love yourself, practice self care. Yes. yes. And love upon yourself. Don't 
Don't wait on anybody to love you. Love you first. Love you first. I'm learning it. I believe it. I'm a late yeah. but it's better late than never. I believe in that 100%. Yeah. Self love, yeah. self care. So I love you all. Take care of yourself. Nadine, for always calling me. I appreciate your calls <laughs> and your check up. Much <laughs> and thank you for the network that you know you have connected me to. And um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to inbox me. You yes. know? Yeah. And thank you, thank you again. Thank you again to share thank you your for being personal here. life. Yes, thank yes. you. Because that's your personal life that you shared with us, with the world. So I'm so happy. And we're blessed to have you tonight on our show with the children in the background. That was so beautiful. <laughs> and they're very beautiful. You thank your children too, because they do have patience. You know, say, you know say, one chat here. He's one chat here. And I see so like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we love him too. Because he's so like a four of them. <laughs> it was nice meeting you. Yes. It was nice meeting you and so, thank you for being here. So viewers, <laughs> viewers, I'm gonna upload the video on my page. So please can you share it to your loved one, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, anyone within your circle? Please share it because each each um how do you say now patients I I don't like calling people patients each person that's getting treatment for cancer they have a different journey and we learn about Miss Nelson's journey and it's the first time that I've heard your someone with your journey because your journey started from Jamaica to the U S mm -hmm. and you know. Two di different doctors, different treatments. So you're you're doing it like new to me. So I'm so happy that you shared with me and to the rest of the world, to my viewers. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me once again. And, All right. And you know the next time mm -hmm. we're talking about beauty. Yes, yes. <laughs> and if you want to come back on the show and talk about anything regarding cancer, you could also invite your network too when it's cancer. Um, Cancer Awareness Month, you guys could come on over and, you know, we could, you know, have a discussion and whatever. It's up to you okay, guys. How, Doesn't matter. How do you have your show, Nadine? Listen, I'm a very busy person. So if someone calls me and says, Nadine, can I come? I said, okay, what time you want to come? Because I'm so busy. So it doesn't okay. matter. As long as they call me, yeah. I, I will make time. Sometimes there are many people that ask me to have a show and I have not confirmed with them yet. Okay. I'm not joking, guys. So, you know, so, but you still can contact me. I'll work with everyone, especially when it comes to cancer. It's a very serious illness we have in this world. And um, it doesn't matter if it doesn't belong, if you do not have it, but maybe someone that you know has it. So, you know, we all have to be educated about cancer. We need it. Sometimes some people do not have the money to go to their doctors. Some people do not have network to really do their own research. But social media, people learn a lot from social media. So if we could bring forth all the information, we're not doctors, but testimonies from people that who are suffering. Male, do you know any guys who have cancer? They could come on the show too. If you know any guys, Christine, you could let him know because you know guys have different types of cancer. So yes, definitely. I don't. Yes, I don't know any yes. personal. But, yes, um, but if you do, we're extending me and Teresa. We're extending our invitation. If you do know a guy, you can also come and talk about. People always talking about women. What the guy? We have to talk about the male too. Most definitely. Yes. Okay. So thank Alrighty. you. So much. Where's your baby? Hi. Thank you. He went down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where is he? You he just you left. Come here. Say hi. Thank you. Come say hi. Come and say hi. Come and say hi. Because you see everybody here. You think it's fifty children. Say hi. Hi. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you so much.
Bye. Sadine from the Nitty Show. Oh, we forgot to say the date. Today is the 18th of March, 2023. Bye.